How's it going everybody? This is Marshall back with bids and offers and uh, I wanted to make this sorry I wanted to make this video basically showing you guys my ninja trader settings and uh, I wanted to answer some questions that some people had about my order flow settings and uh, the way I have my chart set up and how I position myself for success within the markets by having the right tools in front of me that I can use uh, day in day out to analyze the market in the right way for myself and uh, see the participants in the market uh, that are getting pressure put on them and uh, identifying pain and opportunity and uh, magnets for price, etc. So basically, I'm gonna start off over here on this window. Um, as you can see up here, I have an SMA 233, uh, an order flow VWAP, um, sorry, yeah, 233 uh, moving average on this SMA. Uh, I have the order flow VWAP, which is this blue line, and this is the uh, the SMA in here. And I have uh, pretty much my data series settings are all uh, standard. So if I go in here, this is my ES uh, chart. This is the minute chart that I'm on right now. So uh, I use a min I use min I use time. Sorry, I use time candles over here on this side of my screen, and over on this side of my screen, I use a range bar on the footprint on ES. So I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, <clears throat> what I have right now is uh, a thousand bars to load on my one minute chart. That's pretty simple, straightforward. Don't have to really explain that. Uh, chart style candlestick, bar width, I have seven because it looks the best to me. I use red and green candles. Um, my price marker, I actually haven't changed this yet, but I typically have this as pink. So I'm actually gonna do that right now. Uh, I'm gonna change that to uh, magenta and I'm gonna click apply. So now you can see that my uh, price, where is this? Why is that not updating? Oh, okay, because it's not current price. All right, so anyway, um, yeah, I have the uh, trading hours break line um, off on every other chart. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply that to this one. Um, I have my executions and um, that's pretty much it for data series. So it's pretty much all standard. I made these numbers a little bit bold over here. I went into the properties of the chart like this. So if I go here into properties, I have all my fonts at 17. I have a little bit of right side margin so that my candles are not right up against the side of the screen. Uh, I have my grid lines turned off. So both of these horizontal and vertical are off as you can see there. Um, yeah, there's not much to say about that. Uh, this is all basically just standard uh, candlestick chart with two indicators added. This is the order flow VWAP, uh, volume weighted average price, and uh, this yeah, this SMA that moves along with price as well. So I'm going to jump over here and show you guys. I have a two minute. Let me just standardize this. Uh, two minute. I have my five minute. I have my 15 minute. I have my 30 minute which I still have the trading hours break line on. I got to turn that off. I have my one hour. I have my two hour. I have my three hour and I have my four hour, my 690 minute, which is two bars per day because the trading session is uh, 23 hours long. So 23 hours divided by two is, um, uh, what is that? Uh, 11 and a half hours and 11 and a half hours is 690 minutes. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for that. Um, let me see here. Uh, let's go over to the dome. So my dome is essentially, uh, it's just a, a dynamic dome. It's not static. So I don't have to scroll through here. I can scroll through here, but really what the only thing I really use the dome for is identifying uh, some bids that might come in uh, below and above market price and identifying the volume that accumulates at price throughout the session and then recent bid and ask. So the recent bid and ask, uh, I might get rid of this because it's kind of skewing the way I look at the market, uh, but it shows me the recent size that has accumulated on the bid and the ask. Uh, I'm still gonna play around with this a little bit more, but uh, essentially I don't really run any strategies uh, Here's my account, ES, uh, one contract. That's basically it. Um, 
I typically actually, I'm probably going to be putting this back onto another monitor instead of keeping it right here so that I can have this whole monitor just charts. Um, most of the time I might hit these buttons in here, uh, market buy or market sell, or I'll go like this right here. I'll just right click and then hit this right here, either sell limit, uh, sell market, uh, a buy stop market and a buy stop limit. So this is what I use for my stops. If I hop in right here, like I did uh, on this on the last video where I showed you guys this example trade from Friday, April 2nd, um, I hopped in right here at these 6675s. And then when this happened, I actually didn't have, you know, it's not the best example because I actually didn't have a hard stop on this trade. This was a mental stop. Um, but if I had a hard stop and say like it was below the low right here, I would have just entered at the market and then I would click this and then I would go, uh, you know, sell stop market right here. And then that would, that order would go in immediately. Uh, I'm pretty quick at it. I don't find myself needing an ATM strategy, um, which essentially show, uh, allows me to have automated orders. Um, yeah, it's automated trade management. That's what, that's what that stands for. So basically, um, I want to go back to the one minute, I keep that on there. Um, so this volume profile, I use volume profiles from the 930 cash open on the um, ES futures, which is basically the only instrument that I trade ES S and P 500 E mini futures. Um, so I put this profile down from the start of the cash session. Uh, it's actually supposed to be up here. Just one more candle. So, um, this essentially shows me from whatever I start the, the time at to the current time, it shows me all the volume that is accumulated at price throughout the session so far. And in this profile, I can see the one standard deviation of range of the volume. So this line right up here where this color gets brighter at these, uh, 52, 88, 75, this is the top of the value area from 9:30 to, uh, 9:54. So from 9.30 to 9.54, most of the volume on the day has been accumulated between 88.75 and uh, 52.55.25. So this is the one standard deviation range. This is a low volume node that I took this trade off of going long. Uh, I, I mentioned all that, all the specifics of that trade in the last video. So basically what I'll do is I'll draw this profile out to the current price. If current price is like right here, as you can see that, oh, let me go like this. So if current price is right here, you obviously won't be able to see anything past that because that's where price is right now at 52.91. Um, so I just let this, I just keep drawing this throughout the day and I allow this to develop. Uh, as you can see, as it as price develops, we have this uh, high volume node that gets put in here at these 76s. And then uh, the range continues downwards as we make new lows. So that's pretty much all I got for the volume profile. I'm going to make a more in-depth video specifically on how I use the volume profile and all of the ins and outs of it and how it contributes to auction market theory and how all of those things work together with the volume profile. So this is my time and sales right down here. As you can see, all of these charts have the ES E-mini uh, SP 500 futures loaded on them. Um, there's not much that I customized on the time and sales other than the uh, ask and the bid colors, which I have lawn green, uh, which is a pretty nice bright green against a uh, magenta for the bid. So the ask is a long green and my uh, bid is magenta. I like those two colors against each other. You can see these colors in my shorts in my recent video. Um, actually not in my recent video in my first video that I uploaded. Uh, you can see the colors in action here. There's not much to that. So this is basically what I, I have all the questions relating. Um, I wanted to get some watch time in on this video, so I'm mentioning this later on. But <laughs> basically, this is the footprint. So this is my key, essentially, to order flow. There are many ways you can look at volume being transacted in the market and finding participants in the market, but this is my key to identifying pressure and levels which there is transaction at and positive or negative delta. So. I'm going to make a little bit more of an in-depth video on footprint. I have all these things written down. I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of video ideas, a lot of stuff that's going to be coming out soon. Um, so this footprint chart is a 20 tick range footprint chart. So say, let's take this candle right here. The high of this range is 5276. The low of this range is 5271. 5276 minus 5271 is five points. 
In one point on the ES futures, there are four ticks. What is five times four? 20. 20 range volumetric footprint chart. So for every 20 ticks that price moves up or down, this uh, footprint candle gets put in. And I have the footprint chart set up right now to uh, showing, let me go down here. I have volumetric right here, type volumetric range right down here at the bottom, range 20 tick, one tick per level. So every number here, you see the volume, every number up or down, you see the volume total transacted at that price through that move specifically. Uh, I load 1500 bars. That's a lot of bars for right now. Um, I actually only did that so that I could scroll back to this uh, Friday morning because there was a lot of, uh, there was 300 points of range of price action. So a lot of candles came in on Friday, but uh, yeah, essentially chart style, volumetric, uh, chart style type, bid ask. I don't have it set to Delta right now. This is what Delta looks like. So you can view it like that. You can see all this uh, selling down here and then these buyers come in and then the buyers defend right here once again on top of all this selling that came in. Uh, I, I use Delta charts sometimes. Um, I used to use them more, but I'm actually getting pretty comfortable just looking at it bid ask like this. So yeah, show as profile. Uh, that's why it looks like a profile right here. So you can see the bid side of the volume develop and then the ask side. Um, yeah, so I don't have the imbalances shown and the, this is all of my other, these are all my other settings for the footprint on the uh, data series. And down here in this little box, I get the volume of each candle. I get the buy volume in the candle and I get the sell volume in the candle as well. The sell volume and the buy volume add up to the total volume inside of that candle. 1500 plus 1158 turns out to be, adds up to be 2658. So that's pretty much all I got for that. Um, I got Delta on the bar. Delta shows you the total net difference of ask volume minus bid volume. That essentially shows you, it allows you to view the participants in the market that are um, getting aggressively, uh, that are buying aggressively at the market and selling aggressively at the market. Um, yeah, this is pretty much all I got. Uh, these are all my settings for footprint. Um, not much is different. I have cumulative delta. I don't really use that as much. I just kind of use that as a way to view, um, you know, the overall pressure and like, you know, what the buyers or selling sellers are doing in the market. Um, yeah. So let me exit out of there. I only have the one, not sorry. This is not a one minute. Let me rename this real quick. That's totally my bad. Uh, 20 tick range. So 20 tick range ES footprint chart where every 20 ticks that price moves either up or down, a new candle gets put in. And I essentially look for pressure in the market and uh, accumulated volume in the market and people who are getting in and out and getting put on, in under pressure and in pain and spotting people that are rewarded and spotting people that are unrewarded in their efforts. And I try and put myself on the side of the market that is not in pain, where I can profit off of other people's pain. So that's basically all I got for my Ninja Trader settings. I have this time and sales tab. I have the Superdome. I have uh, this uh, chart over here with all of these other time frames. I got the daily. I got the 690. I got the four hour. I got the three hour, the two hour, the one hour, the 30 minute, 15, five, two, one, and then the 30 second chart, which I haven't been using as much. I'm probably going to start using that more so that I can get slightly better sniper entries by looking at the price action a little bit better. But these are all my personal preferences. This is all what works for me. Only do what works for you. You guys know that to be a successful trader in the market, you need the right tools at your disposal to be able to operate on your tools, knowing that you have a statistical edge over other market participants by putting you on the right side of the market to make money and lose as little as possible. So I use all of this to do that every day. Not every, sorry, not every day. I use all this to consistently take standardized risk trades where I am comfortable um, essentially using, sorry, identifying the pressure in the market and identifying people that are in pain so that I can put myself on the other side of them and make money on them. 
So uh, it doesn't always happen, but my equity curve is nice and up to the right. And uh, yeah, my losses are paid for by my wins. I manage my trades on the go. So if I enter right here, like, like I did here at these 52.66.75s, I actually did not have a physical stop on this trade, which is something that I never do. But the market conditions on Friday prompted me to kind of just give my position a little bit of wiggle room. So I would, typ I would typically enter either by hitting a market buy or by going like this and hitting market. Or, and for a stop, I would uh, say I entered here long. I would go right down here, like below this low or wherever I wanted to put my stop for this trade. Say it's down here, I would just go like that and just hit that and it goes in pretty instantly. So uh, that's how I enter and exit my trades. Uh, indicators, I really only use this 233 SMA because that's a Fibonacci number. I like the way that it works with the price action. Don't ask me why. Well, you can't ask me why, but uh, you know, people who know about Fibonacci can understand uh, how that works. This order flow VWAP, I only have uh, the VWAP line shown. I do not have the standard deviations of VWAP shown. So I only have this uh, Dodger Blue um, all of these others I do not use. I don't use the standard deviations with the VWAP. Some people do. It work, if it works for you, that's great. I don't use it. Um, yeah, my voice is starting to dry out now, so I'm going to cut this video. Uh, I hope you guys took something away from this video. Uh, please, you know, if, if this chart style works for you, absolutely use it. If it doesn't work for you, try new things. Figure out what works for you, what you like, what your eyes like. And it's important to be able to look at something and your eyes like it. If your eyes don't like it, you're cooked. I mean, you got to be able to comfortably look at something. So I'm actually, I just changed this footprint style to this, to the show as profile. Um, so I'm going to see if my eyes like it on Monday, tomorrow. And if they don't like it, then I'm going to go back to the standard uh, box with just the bid and the ask volume and the red uh, imbalances. So yeah. This is pretty much all I got for this video. I hope you guys took something away from it. I hope that you guys uh, use this information to your advantage and learn from some of my past mistakes and my experience to be able to put yourselves on the right side of the market and make money, uh, if not every day, at least every week and every month. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm gonna have another video coming out soon. Uh, this week is gonna be very volatile. Be careful, know where to put your stops nowhere to enter, nowhere to have a target, always use predetermined stops and targets for an invalidation point and a confirmation point, always use tools like price action, order flow, volume, the dome, whatever you got to use to confirm your trade, to put yourself on the right side of the market and uh, try your best to manage your risk well and make money. Thank you guys very much for listening and watching my video and I will be back soon for more.